I feel a bit sorry for William and Kate really being put in this position. Demands for reparations and a whole narrative here uh, that Meghan and Harry have helped to create. I mean, of that, there is no doubt at all. But I think okay. really what gets me down about this, it is uh, the sort of the feeling amongst so many commentators in the UK that somehow slavery is a uniquely British thing. We were the only people in the world, wait for it, that ever did it. White British people enslaved black people and sent them across to the Caribbean and the Americas. Now look, none of us, none of us today think what happened those centuries back was a good thing. We even don't think public executions are a good thing. There are so many things that happened years ago that we wouldn't you know, approve of in any way at all. But the thought we should pay reparations, well, hold on a minute. Okay, I'm listening, you have my attention. Because there was something called the Barbary Pirates. Now I know that any young people watching this won't know because they won't have been taught this at all through our education system. But a recent report from Ohio University in America okay. suggests that up to 1.25 million people from Sicily right up the west coast of Spain and France and into Cornwall, getting back to your previous <laughs> debate that you had before the break, <laughs> Wales, Ireland, 1.25 million white slaves were taken by North Africans from countries that we now know as Algeria and Libya. Um, and by the way, folks, it wasn't just the Brits doing slave trade. The <gasps> rest of Europe were doing slave trade. So let's get a sense of perspective. And what's really brought all this on for me isn't just the royal visit to Jamaica. It's Tulse Hill in South London. Oh, now, I, yeah. I was at school at Dun Nice. A mile up yeah. the road. They're going to rename Tulse Hill. They're going to cancel Tulse Hill. They're going to get rid of dozens of road names. I've got to be honest with you. I've known Tulse Hill for over 50 years. I didn't know. I mean, ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. I didn't even know it was based on a guy called Sir William Tulse, who made his money, you know, out of the slave trade. But, but, but we can't go on pretending this is a purely British a purely white what? thing. We need some sense of perspective and balance in this argument. And above all, what we should say is whatever was wrong in the past, it was the British that first realized what a moral wrong it was, abolished it, Fact. and then spent decades on the high seas, driving out the slave trade at the cost of thousands of Royal Navy sailors lives so please folks can we have a sense of perspective and if reparations are wait for it that are to be paid well libya egypt algeria you owe us a huge amount of money um, and the corners you'll be very very pleased they won't even need gordon ramsay anymore <laughs> but it would never end i mean it was interesting nigel uh dominic samuels on our superstar panel tonight she is a brit with jamaican heritage and she said her concern about this, and I found it fascinating, actually, is that the current government of Jamaica is wanting to wall... OK, I'm listening. You have my attention. ...paper all of the social problems, all of the other issues in their society today by focusing on this historic issue of reparations. And I think she's right, you know, because actually the Jamaican prime minister should be... OK thinking a bit more about how to turn his country around. Yes, I mean, you know, if the Jamaican Prime Minister wants to continue with this narrative of what he sees as being historic wrongs, and they probably are, okay. in many ways, um, that is giving victimhood status to an entire country. Yeah. And that of itself is a very negative emotion. Tell someone they're a victim and they'll feel down. Tell someone they're a champion and they can overcome things and, 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 and succeed in the future. And they, and you know what? They might just do very, very well. So I, I find the whole thing a negative, Wait for it. negative narrative. But there's something 
bigger going on here, and it's not being commented on, Dan, but I'm going to mention it now very briefly, and we'll come back to it in the weeks to come. Take Barbados. Mm. Barbados recently got rid of the Queen as head of state. <gasps> Why? Well, China is the answer. China are doing their best through loans, money and investments to break the British link with the Commonwealth. It's happening. We've yeah. seen it with the Chagos Islands and that row that's going on there. We've seen it in Barbados. Jamaica, I don't think China's the influence there, but there is a big attempt Yet. Yet. out there to downgrade what? the English-speaking peoples of the world and this remarkable alliance. And there are lots and lots of people in Jamaica whose granddads flew in Bomber Command in World War II. There is an amazing link between our nations, and it's being poisoned by <gasps> many, many people. And that is a terrible shame. Very good point. Very good point. Nigel, I just uh, want to come back to this idea that's been propagated by the left-wing media. OK. By BLM in particular, that the British royal family is racist. And yes, I did get a lot of criticism today because I blamed Meghan Markle for some of this, not for all of it, but for some of it. And I stand by that, Nigel, because Whoa! her interview with Oprah Winfrey is being used <coughs> by some of the main activists for reparations and a Republican Jamaica right now. But what I found particularly unsavory, Nigel, was the fact that the BLM movement tried to use, Wait for it. use this picture of William and Kate uh, greeting fans behind a wire fence when Raheem Sterling had done exactly the same thing a few moments earlier and no one mentioned it. Are you serious? Yeah, well, look, you know, the contradictions, uh, the uh, untruths of Meghan Markle know no bounds. And the fact that Prince Harry himself um, is happy for his family to suffer some of the injustice that comes from this, the injustice that comes from this is so wrong. But the truth of it is, as you can see, Kate and Wills are becoming global megastars. One dares to say, Kate more than Wills. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Somewhat reminiscent of what was going on 40 years ago uh, with his father and with Diana. But I think we should all be very pleased and very proud that out there on the world stage, We've got a couple like this doing us okay. such great credit. And you know, with the Queen now being effectively confined to barracks in Windsor, we need to recognise that the royal family are the most important part of soft power that we have in this world. Yeah. The Commonwealth now has within it 2.3 billion people. Add to that over 300 Americans who seem to love the royal family even more than we do, and you realise just how important Fact. the monarchy is to us, our presence, our soft power in the world, and especially in post-Brexit Britain, it matters even more. And that makes, frankly, what Meghan and Harry have done, nothing, nothing but totally despicable. I agree. And I think they will lose. I think this narrative that the British royal family is racist has been pushed by the far left extremists in the U.S. media. But actually, you're completely Stop it. Right. Even loads of Republicans, Nigel, in Jamaica absolutely adored William and Kate. There are about 60 protesters outside the British High Commission. It's just the fact that the media uh, who are in... OK, I'm listening. You have my attention. ...in the tank for Harry and Meghan in the US are trying to create a particular narrative. And I think they will lose, but we have to expose it. Well, look, you know, the media, the mainstream media, and that includes... <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. ...includes a very large chunk of the British media um, have always been ashamed um, of this country, of its standing, of its history, of its status, of its royal family, of its individuality, of its uniqueness. It's why they wanted us all to be parceled and packaged up 
into a wonderful new European project run by bureaucrats we couldn't vote for, couldn't remove, and who were generally kicked out political failures for their own countries, such as Belgium. Um, so look, there's nothing surprising in any of this and I mean look at Belize the truth of it is the Belize trip from the couple this week was a huge success half a dozen people turn up the placards and protest and you would have thought the whole of Belize were in uproar fact uproar <laughs> at the fact that the royal family had visited I mean Barbados who got rid of the Queen as head of state a referendum did it without reference to anybody and opinion polls show actually a majority of Barbadians. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Wish that hadn't happened. So yeah. never be surprised that mainstream media wants to destroy our image, our reputation, our legacy, and our future. Do you know what? They don't like the country. They're Are you serious? embarrassed by us. And George Orwell got it so right in the late 1940s when he said, there's a certain type of Englishman who would rather steal from the poor box in church on a Sunday morning than stand for the national anthem. They're still there. <gasps> they still exist. But the Brexit vote proved, the Brexit vote proved that the silent majority are sound, decent, upright, honest, patriotic people. And I believe in increasing numbers. They can Woo! become fans of GB News too.